In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the connection between osteoporosis and cardiovascular disease and five key measurements you really should keep an eye on if you want to determine how healthy your heart is. So if you have either bones or a heart, you're going to want to watch this video. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Ed Dubu, physical therapist from Integrated Physical Therapy in Bellingham, Washington. If you look at the literature, there is unfortunately a relationship between osteoporosis and cardiovascular disease. More specifically, the lower your bone density, unfortunately, the greater your risk of cardiovascular disease. The exact reason for the relationship between the two isn't really known, but there are a few common denominators, and the big one being inflammation. If you've been to the channel before, you know that we've talked about chronic low-level inflammation as being the core or the root cause of so many of the chronic diseases that we get, especially for those of us over the age of 50. So anything that you can do in your lifestyle, exercise, eat better, that can reduce your chance of inflammation is gonna make yourself that much healthier and that much more resilient. Osteoporosis and cardiovascular disease also share some other risk factors. Smoking, please, if you smoke, stop excessive alcohol, lack of exercise, and being overweight. If you do suffer from osteopenia or osteoporosis, hopefully you are on a strength training program. That is the number one thing that you can start today to help your cause. I'll put a video link right up here to a basic exercise that I have that you can start right now at home with no additional extra equipment. And now it's time everyone for a true confession from Ed. I don't go to the doctor for my annual exam. If you're a patient of mine and I see you in the clinic and you're over the age of 50, one of the questions I ask you regularly are, do you go to the doctor to get an annual exam? Now, I need to be better at that, full disclosure, okay? However, one thing that I do do is I get my blood work done on a approximately six month basis because you know what? I wanna know what's going on under the hood. If you look at the literature, the top killer for both men and women is cardiovascular disease. So I look at that and I say, okay, well, if cardiovascular disease is going to be probably most likely to kill me, then it makes sense that I'm going to take a look at indicators that are going to show me or tell me how healthy my heart is. It never made sense to me to have my blood work done once a year. Now, if everything is perfect, all my numbers are fine, then yeah, once a year would be fine. But my numbers aren't perfect. And so I want to know that if I'm making a change, either through a medication, a supplement, or a lifestyle change, am I making a difference? No one would ever go on high blood pressure medication, but then say, okay, you know what, man, just only check it once a year and then just uh, adjust the dosage accordingly. No, it doesn't make any sense. But yet I don't feel like I need to go to the doctor every six months either. And so luckily there are independent labs that you can contract with that you just pay for it directly and you can go and you can have your blood work done. A day later, it's in your email, let you know what your numbers are. And then based upon that information, you can work out a plan with your doctor, or at least you can get an idea if you're trending in the right direction, or unfortunately, things are continuing to get a little bit worse. So there are five key indicators that give us a pretty good idea of how healthy our heart is. The first thing you wanna check, and probably the easiest, is your blood pressure. If you look at the literature, ideally you want your blood pressure to be 120 over 80 or less. And the reason is, is because you don't want your arterial system under high pressure for long periods of time. If you did have high blood pressure, I do recommend checking it maybe every other day at the same time with the same arm, just to get some data points. 118 over 74, so I'm doing pretty good here. The next thing to look at is your LDLs. Ideally, you want them to be 70 or less. Higher levels of LDLs have been linked to plaques, hardening of the arteries, so you really want to keep an eye on your LDLs. Cute dog break. Hey, Romeo. Oh, he gave me an eyelid. Next, we have your triglycerides. You really want to have your triglycerides at 150 or less. Once again, Higher triglycerides have been linked to strokes and heart attacks. Next, we have your waist circumference. And all of us kind of have a general idea of how our pants fit or maybe what, uh, what loop we're putting our belt in. And so there's a couple different ways of looking at that. For women, it really should be 35 inches or less. For men, 40 inches or less, right around the belly button, guys. Another probably more accurate way of looking at it is that your waist should be less than half of your height in inches. So 
do the math. I'm six foot two, so that's 74 inches divided by two should be 37. So my waist should be 37 inches or less. And the last key metric to keep an eye on is your fasting blood glucose. Your blood sugar should be 100 or less. Oftentimes the foods we consume have high levels of sugar. We have trouble controlling our blood sugars. And the next thing you know, maybe we're staring at pre-diabetes or type two diabetes, which if left unchecked can also lead to increased heart disease and chronic inflammation. The thing to remember about either osteoporosis or cardiovascular disease, the nice thing is, is that what helps one typically helps the other. Start small. It can be overwhelming to figure out what you should do and what you shouldn't do. I'll put a playlist at the end of this video that has all my osteoporosis videos on there. One of the first things I recommend doing is, like I said earlier, is start a strengthening program and a daily walking program. I'll put a link right up here about how I got my mom to actually take a few more steps during the course of the day. And maybe you'll find it helpful. But either way, the idea is to get regular, daily, consistent exercises. Keep the hope because there's a whole lot that we can do about it, whether you decide to take medications for bone density or not. All right, hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel so you never miss another one of our videos. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And let's take care of our heart and our bones, right? That sounds good. Let's do that.